and welcome everyone a hearty welcome to this two-year celebration of the Writer's Corner live show. We are live on Facebook and we will be posting this onto YouTube later as well. So a hearty welcome everyone. I'm Bridget Helen Bender in Cape Town in South Africa and my amazing co-host for the last two years has been Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Mary, welcome. Hi, we are so excited to be here today and I am in the Nashville, Tennessee area. So it's so cool that we are connected uh, around the world. We've got some people, um, some of our authors on today are from around the world. We're so excited to have technology to be able to do this and to celebrate two years. Um, and we have every single author that we've had on our show has been absolutely amazing. Their stories are amazing, their journeys, what brought them to where they are, their passions for what they do. Um, and even if they kind of stumbled across writing, it's still so brilliant, I think, in each an individual, each individual person. And we've been just so truly blessed to have met everyone and to carry on. You know, we kind of started this show two years ago, just we need a platform for authors. And you and I have been wanting to do a show. And, you know, we were like, okay, let's do it. And we didn't really know what we were doing. And now it has, here we are two years <laughs> later and we're booked to December. So we're pretty excited, you know, and we've got so I many know, tips. Right? Yeah, we've learned so much. So when Bergetti goes to actually write her book, it's going to be a breeze because everybody's given so much information and help, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's been quite a journey, you know, starting off a show without any planning. And, and I think that's probably what my one sort of giveaway to anybody who's still on the fence about whether or not you should be doing this, whether you should go live, um, whether you should start a show, don't wait for perfection, you know, because sometimes we think, well, I want to get another camera, I want to get another microphone, um, I want to get a green screen, I want to do this, I want to do that. Literally go with what you have, you know, because you're never going to get to the point of perfection ever. Technology changes, life changes, things changes all the time. Um, so don't wait for that perfect moment. It's never going to come. And along the way, we've met all of you from all over the world. It's been a wild ride. It's been absolutely phenomenal getting to know each one of you um, and getting to know your backstory. Because it's one thing having the book, but then actually being able to speak to the author and hearing their story, where they're coming from, why they wrote their book. That part has been the most amazing thing. And then just having friends from all over the world. So I think let's do a round robin and let's introduce, let's introduce ourselves. And perhaps we should start with the youngest author amongst us, Olivia. Olivia, you were absolutely a phenomenal guest and I love the video that you did. Thank you so much for that. I will always cherish that little video. So would you like to say hello to everyone, tell everyone your, your full name? Uh, where you are based and also what you've written because you've written not just one book and tell everyone how old you are. Um, I have just turned 12 in July. Wonderful, wonderful. And so um, what, tell everybody, yeah, your full name and then you, yeah, what number book you're on actually. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Olivia Marie Sherry and um, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I am now um, writing my fourth book. And that is amazing because, you know, a lot of people took, I mean, some of us here, maybe we won't mention names and we'll ask you to guess who it was, took almost 30 years to get their first book out um, and published and you on your fourth book and you're 12 years old. So like, you know, yay, congratulations. Well done um, on that. And we can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next couple of years because you're off to a roaring start. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, Thank you for having me again. So It's a big, big pleasure. So we're gonna just sort of do a round robin. Lisa, would you like to go next? Sure. Hello, everyone from Canada. I'm calling in from Canada. And so the name of my book is Speak with Impact. Can't see it here on my green screen. <laughs> it's, um, it's all about public speaking. 
And it was such a pleasure to be on the show with uh, both of our wonderful hosts, Brigetti and Mary Elizabeth. And this is so fun to celebrate with you two years. Well done. Thank you. Let's just, before we carry on, Lisa, um, someone's posted, I think Joseph said, what are the titles of your books, Olivia? So can you quickly tell us what are the titles of your four books? Uh, of course. Uh, my first one was called Her Nightmare, and I wrote that when I was eight years old. My second book was called The Girl in the Swing. I wrote that when I was nine. And um, and my third book was The Truth About Firefly Meadows, which I wrote when I was 10 or 11. That took a lot longer to write. And my fourth book, which I am almost done writing, is called The Last Time I Smelled uh, Licorice Tea. <laughs> I like that title. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is uh, wonderful. Olivia, what's your what's your words of wisdom to any young people that's watching the show and they haven't started writing or they're thinking about it? What do you want to say to them? Well, actually, I know a lot of people, mainly from my school, who um, are, I guess, inspired by me. And they keep asking me, well, what made you want to write all this? And I just said, well, if you want to write something, and you already have an idea of what you want to write, you should just do it because you probably won't get the same chance if you just don't do it. So I just say like, just do it. Wise words from a young old sage. That's my sage motto, would, Nike. Would seize, seize the moment, right? Yes, mm -hmm. just do it or it doesn't get done. Wow. Wow, Bonnie, would you like to go next? Um, oh, uh, sure. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Bonnie McBird, and I'm sitting here in London, uh, which is fitting because I write Sherlock Holmes for HarperCollins. Uh, I have a series for them, and I have three books so far. Uh, the first one was Art in the Blood. Whoops. I'm very lucky. I had a wonderful uh, book designer, I think, because I love these covers. The first one is Art in the Blood. Second one is Unquiet Spirits. And the most recent one is The Devil's Due. And I'm currently working on book number four. Uh, so I'm trying to catch up to you, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> book number four, which is uh, The Three Locks. And um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm very, very thankful that I have something to do in lockdown because uh, my husband and I have been uh, quarantining ourselves, well, lockdown really, not quarantine. Um, and I haven't left this flat since March 7th. I haven't even stepped outside at all. <laughs> so so wow. I'm really thankful that I'm a writer and I can keep working um, during this lockdown. Uh, and also, um, I'm really delighted to be spending time in John Watson's shoes because I like the narrator of these stories very much. I like putting on his brain and I like spending time with Sherlock Holmes as sort of master of rational thought, especially in times that are particularly crazy and trying as they are. So this is a, is a place I like to live and I hope to hope my readers will enjoy sharing it. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for being here. And yes, you, your novels are great. They're awesome. And we're so excited to have gotten to have you on the show and get to know you and everything. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It's, it was a pleasure being on your show and being interviewed by both of you and also hearing about what you're doing. Thank you so much. All right. Who's in the hot seat next? I'm going to go with um, South Africa. We've got two people from South Africa. Here. We haven't had many South African authors. So I'm going to go with Fred and Melissa uh, Platt. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Can you tell us a little bit about your your book and your and your and your story and and um, I mean it was such an amazing thing to have you guys on the show because your story is a is a personal one um, your journey is a personal one and I know everyone's journey is personal but this was this was special for a for a different reason um, so those of you those for those who don't know you could you just briefly tell us yeah so so my book is called Lessons from a Rainbow Unicorn. A true story of a father's loss, and um, it deals with the period 15 and a half months that we had our son, Sam, um, who unfortunately passed away um, after 15 and a half months, very short period on earth. But in that period, um, you know, I always say that 
I had great visions for for Sam teaching me. I wanted to teach him so many lessons because I've made so many mistakes in my life. I, I was going to really get this little boy joined up on, on, on how to deal with life. Um, I never had that opportunity, but he taught me everything. Um, and the book really is the genesis of, of Sam and, and the journey that we had spending 15 and a half months in, in ICU, um, holding his hand every day. And then uh, the second half of the book really deals with those lessons that um, as a, a CEO of a listed company, um, I thought I understood life until I'd had this journey with, with my son. And it culminates, I suppose, in the establishment of the Footprints for Sam Trust, which is the legacy that, uh, that Sam has. And subsequent to that, um, Sam's life on earth has impacted incredibly, so much so that he's really fundamentally changed healthcare within the South African context. And my beautiful wife has been spearheading that, uh, that part of it. That's amazing. That is it's so amazing that, and so brilliant that such a little teeny being has done so much in this world. Um, and I know he's watching y'all and so excited about what his parents have done in his name. Thanks, Thank Mary. Thank you. Yeah, you guys, you guys have done a great job um, honoring your son, Sam. So, so thank you. Shall we go over to Canada? Um, Maria? <laughs> Maria, we, we unmute. Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everyone. I'm from Ontario, Canada. And I met Bridget actually on Be Live TV. I was watching, she was on the Be Live original group, uh, and I see you still are with them. About three years ago, I heard your name. I watched all your shows with Stephen Healy. I really enjoyed everything about you. And I have written my book, Double Your Income Using Social Media, like in and got it published in 2015, and I even self-published it. So I, I'm not only a publisher, but a writer also. So that's the one, published in 2015, and I won, I've won about three or four awards. And then I have a little bit of a biomagnetic entrepreneur, and this book won the Guinness World Record in Canada of 126 authors signing the book at the same time. And that happened actually in February 15th, 2020. So, you know, and then, uh, you know, so that was a lot of fun getting, you know, getting awards for that. Also, we made number one, doesn't have it here because that's the one we were using to sign. <laughs> so that doesn't show it, but we have become number one. So that kind of makes it fun, right? And I'm working on another one um, it, to put in a book about my life, actually, because really no one really knows about my life and actually my journey through uh, my businesses, because I am a business uh, woman since 1982. I've had a number of businesses and now I'm involved with real estate. I'm a real estate investor in Ontario, Canada, and I have many groups. I I'm the founder of many Facebook uh, membership groups for landlords and real estate investors. So for the past 20 years, I've been involved in real estate and I'm an educator by, by nature. I have my master's also and, I, and, and I've taught how to be an entrepreneur, how to start your own business. Like I've been on the road teaching people all this. So now I'm kind of culminating it all in the side of my my business model, which is real estate now. And I was happy to be um, interviewed um, uh, by both of you, um, Bridget and uh, Mary. Uh, it was wonderful being interviewed by you, by both of you. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know what if you have any other questions or not, but I thank you for inviting me. And this is a wonderful group of people to meet you know, and I'm having so much fun with the media also, as you know, Bridget and Mary, I have my own TV and radio shows now. I'm being syndicated. It's called All Things Maria Recruit, All Things Business, All Things Real Estate. So I'm, they're on YouTube, they're on two radio stations, they're on Facebook all over the place for my members. So I've gotten really into the media and it was launched with, of course, the book and everything else that goes with it. I'm having fun. Mm, congratulations, congratulations Maria. Yes. well done it's well awesome. done excellent 
Excellent. Shall we move over to another one of the guys? Sergio, shall we put you in the hot seat? Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Hi, um, Sergio. So, uh, I'm Sergio Troncoso, and I'm actually uh, in rural Connecticut, although I usually live in New York City. And uh, this is where my wife and I are sequestering each other. And my book is A Peculiar Kind of Immigrant Son, uh, it's a, 13, a collection of 13 linked stories on immigration in the United States. And uh, I just won the Catarula Short Story Prize, a thousand bucks. So I'm pretty happy about that. Congratulations. And yeah. I, teach, I teach at the Yale Writers Workshop, and I'm also um, president of the Texas Institute of Letters right now. So I, I'm actually organizing 13 different committees on different literary prizes. And uh, so it's been a, a very uh, hardworking summer. And uh, I guess the, the best thing I could say about this summer is that the Whitcliffe Collections in Texas has asked for my papers. Um, so they, I've been surrounded by all these boxes of old manuscripts that I'm sending to them. And they, they just bought Cormac McCarthy's papers and Sandra Cisneros's papers. So it's a thrill for me that now all, all this stuff I have in closets in Connecticut will, will end up where people can use it. And uh, the last thing I would say is that I have two new books coming out next year, another novel and a, um, a, uh, a, an anthology in which I'm the main editor, a new anthology of literature. Mm, and, and by nice. the way, I, I love being on your program. Uh, and so thank you very much for inviting me. And, and I certainly hope that I can keep talking to some of the authors and audience uh, after this. Absolutely. Yes, you all, all should connect because it's uh, a big part of this is networking. And, you know, we started this platform to give authors a place uh, for a voice in their books and to be supportive. And I think um, there's nothing like it in the whole world and it's free and it's awesome, isn't it? So yeah. thank you, Sergio. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah what are the yeah. balloons behind you, by the way? Well, it's our two year anniversary and our colors are red oh. and white. So I got balloons to celebrate. It's a party. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> we'll also have some ice cream afterwards. Please do, because I don't want to eat it because it'll just stay. So you eat it for me. <laughs> there we go. Robert, should we put you in the hot seat next? Yeah, and let's go Rob Jones next because I think he has to go soon, right, Rob okay. Jones? Yes, Rob, we get, we'll have you next. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, okay. That, that's fine. You and then we'll go with Robert Carnes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I just want to first of all congratulate Mary and Bridgetti on your endeavors for two years. This is fantastic. And uh, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, my name is Rob Jones and I um, author. I wrote two books. The first one is um, a children's book entitled Here Comes the Night. And this book um, is, is in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. It's about uh, the night coming in and, and just um, blessing a child's imagination and taking them to places where of joy and, and love and, and fun. And it's for um, children that have a hard time going to sleep at night. So this is what this book's about. And I also wrote a, a romance novel, a, a new adult romance novel called Bad Boys of the Kingdom. And um, and I know people is like, you write romance and and my my objective is try to disenfranchise um, the mindset that men cannot write romances or, or even read them. So that's uh, one of my objectives of, of writing this, but I just love romance. And, and this book is about um, an egotistical um, bad boy rock and roller. He falls in love with a preacher's daughter and she is appalled by him initially because of his hubris and pride and self-centeredness, but it's a moment that um, presents itself that she sees a different um, side of him. And so she gives him a chance and they fall in love. But with any relationship, you got your struggles and you know their lives are antithetical. He, he's um, in a rock and roll life and she's in a church life. And so there's some tension there, but through that relationship, they both, um, mature emotionally and and spiritually and um it works out at the end as with all romances so <laughs> well we hope Wonderful. so right <laughs> yes we, in books they do right so yes. rob you need to hook up with dania because dania is a romance writer also yes 
Yeah, oh, absolutely. You guys, you guys need to connect, okay? Absolutely. But yes, Rob, thank you so much. And I'm so excited thank about you. your success in two books in one year. That's awesome. Yes, and I'm working on the, um, the second book in, in this series, in the romance series entitled Bad Girls of the Kingdom. So I'm on um, chapter three of that and I'm trying to keep oh this my rolling. Goodness. And, and you Bonnie, want to roll. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make this happen. And Bonnie, um, just want to let you know, my wife and I, are, we're planning on going to, to London next year. So hopefully we can get together yeah. sometime. Yeah, yeah, please, please connect. I think it's interesting that you're writing romance as a man and I'm writing Sherlock Holmes as a woman. Uh, <laughs> Isn't it? And why not? <laughs> absolutely, that's fantastic. Congratulations as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Look forward to seeing you in London. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful, mission accomplished. I love this networking going on here. Uh, Robert, shall you, Robert you tell us where you are and what, what you've written. Am I up? Yes, yes, you are. We need we I'm need up. a cup of right. what do we need a cup of tea, a cup of Joe, yeah. uh, Irish coffee. What do we need? Hey. Oh no, he's stuck. Uh, have we lost? Hey. We've lost sound with Robert. Okay, Irish tea, that? Irish breakfast tea might be good for you, right? Right about everybody. <laughs> oh, you lost me. What yeah, happened? Yeah, there you there you Am are. Back, you are. You're, you're back. What that happened? As soon as, I, you... as, as soon as I start talking, the whole thing goes to bits. I mean, that's 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 how my dates go. As soon as I start talking, everything just collapses around me. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, good to see you all, and uh, congratulations on the two-year anniversary. And when I came on your show, I've been on your show twice. And the first time I came on, I spoke about this book here, which was High Brazil, Island of Eternity. I have since uh, written another novel called Crab. And I also writ wrote uh, several volumes of poems and sh short stories. So I've been busy and I hope to have another novel coming out within the next month or two. And I'm really oh, wow. excited about that. Yeah, I'm really excited. That was what I did during um, lockdown. So if anybody ever asked, what did you do during lockdown? You wrote a book. So what, what better thing to do? And hopefully, you now fingers crossed, I'll get it done. I'm very close to completing a draft and uh, then the editing starts. So I'm really excited about it. It's, it's kind of flown very well and it feels good. So I'm really happy about that. And there'll be another one to add to the, uh, the collection of books and stories that I've published. So really happy about that. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. Do we want to um, do we want to get Matthew on since he's sitting in his car? <laughs> yes, let's go with Matthew. Hey, hey everybody. Matthew. How's it Hi. going? It's so good to see so you. I'm, uh, Matthew. Oh, thanks, Mary. I'm uh, Matthew V. Brockmeyer. Uh, I'm the author of Kind Nepenthe, Under Rotting Sky. And I have a new book coming out in September called Nest of Salt. I write transgressive dark fiction, rural noir, and horror. Let's see, uh, recently I was uh, published in an anthology with Stephen King and Neil Gaiman called Dark Tides. And I also recently had a story selected for Year's Best Hardcore Horror Volume 5. And uh, oh yeah, and I'm in Humboldt County, California. Yes, and you howl at the moon. I howl at the moon. I occasionally break out in uh, fur and fangs and run free th through the forest. <laughs> Somebody needs to write a book about Matthew. Who wants to sign up for that? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yes, I know. It'd be very It'd be interesting. A wild book. Hey, where can people find your books? And are you, what's your next project? Uh, I'm writing on a prequel of sorts right now for Kind of Penthe. It's uh -huh. about um, the uh, the ghost in the story. It's about how he died. Um, and you can find my books anywhere. Books are for sale. Um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, you know, the usual awesome. suspects. Great, Matthew. Thanks I'm so on, uh, much. Sure. Shall we, stay, shall we stay with the other Matthew, Matthew Arnold Stern? You're up next. 
Yes, and I'm also in California. On the other end of the state, I'm in Orange County, California. So different vibe from uh, Humboldt, that's for sure. <laughs> and first of all, I want to congratulate you on your second anniversary. It was a great time when I uh, spoke with you. So I wish you all the best and for many years to come. And my most recent novel is Amiga. And it actually takes place or part of it in Marin County in the 1980s. And it talks about uh, the early days of the personal computer industry as a programmer looks back at uh, trying to find out how to deal with her present day problems by looking at a past she wants to forget. I've written some other books. I also have a book about public speaking called Mastering Table Topics. And I've written, self-published two other novels, uh, Offline and Doria. And Amiga is the first novel that I had uh, published by an actual publisher. It's with uh, Black Rose uh, Writing. And you could find it wherever books are sold, Amazon, at your local bookstore. Also, uh, if you go to my website, matthewarnoldstern.com, and click the link to for Amiga now available, it will tell you more about my books. And it, my site also has more of my writing. And you can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. And my handle for all of those is MAS Writer. So great to meet all of you, and I hope to see you again. Mm, thank you, Matthew. Awesome. <laughs> so lovely to see you again. Um, shall we move over to some of the ladies? Lori, shall we put you in the hot seat? Hey there. Thank you, Brigetti. I am Lori Delkradecki from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm actually about an hour south of Mary Jackson. So um, I have two books. The first one is Keep Those Clients, Learn Relationship Marketing, Double Your Business, and Get Endless Referrals. And so that book is on business. And then I have a second book called we all have choices. You can smile even through your tears, through all your steps of life. So we have choices in every step that we make. And so that's more of a personal grief and motivational type book. And I am actually writing my third book right now that is how to find the next love of your life. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just got remarried during COVID after seven and a half years being widowed. So that will be my third book coming out. And you can get my books at my website. It's lauridelk.me. And also follow me on all social media at Lori Delk. Awesome. Thank you, Lori, so much. And congratulations on your wedding. I loved your pictures and I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful, wonderful news. Um, Louisa, shall we go to you? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Louisa Gugel. I am from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, right now I'm in Italy. Um, my book is Until Forever. Uh, the book was in tribute to my husband. Uh, the book talks about our love story and uh, and it's an inspiration for uh, women that um, have uh, gone through you know the ups and downs um, the first part of the book is a little uh, it talks about my darkest moments uh, but then um, it goes into uh, this love story and uh, and by the end, um, there is a good ending. Um, uh, my husband passed away in 2014. There's a picture of him uh, inside my book. Um, and, uh, you know, it can be found on Amazon.com. Um, so this is my book, Until Forever. And um, so I treasured this book very much because um, it helped it's me. It's part of to, you. 
it's part of me. Uh, it was a good uh, uh, healing process for me, and uh, it can help anyone that goes through depression. And uh, so I, I feel very proud that in just eight months, I was able to write my book which is, I hear a lot of people, it takes uh, a few years, um, but I think I was driven by writing um, and let everybody know about this love story. Um, and the good part is at the end of the book, it talks about that I'm, I met a wonderful man. Um, and uh, so I'm in a relationship. Um, so, again, my book it can be found on Amazon.com or Black Rose Writing, uh, the publisher uh, website. And uh, thank you for having me here. <laughs> thank you, Louisa. Um, can I just ask you? You know, there's, there's there's some of you that have written very very intensely personal stories. You know, um, something that's happened in your life that was profound, like Melissa and, and Fred's book as well. Um, what would you say to someone that feels it's too difficult to become vulnerable? How has writing your story helped you? Um, well, I think uh, uh, writing uh, what I was feeling, it kind of, uh, I felt um, all my emotions were coming through. So I was, uh, while I was writing, um, I would uh, cry, I would, uh, you know, and then I would uh, laugh and uh, remember the good, mom you know, uh, moments uh, that I had with my husband, wonderful man. Um, but um, for me, it was uh, healing because I, I cannot ex explain how it, I felt, but writing and writing until two, three o'clock in the morning after 12, 16 hours of work, because I own a, a business. Uh, me and my husband owned the business together. So when he passed away, I was left to, to deal with all that. And so waking up in the morning, get to the studio. I have a beautiful uh, franchise studio. It's called the Fitness Together. And we do personal training and nutrition counseling. And I had my wonderful clients, employees that helped me go through because I did not have a family, you know, uh, back in Massachusetts. And so coming from leaving my studio, I would get in the car and just let it, uh, everything out and I would get home and for me writing a book it was a, a you know something that I had to do um, um, I had to do it I, I, I don't know how to explain it but um, I can remember one day that uh, after he passed away and I said I have to I want a, a, our story to go out there and I don't know how to do I don't know what to do and I'm sitting near the fireplace and I said, by the morning, I will know what I have to do. And that morning I just said, I know what I have to do. I will write a book about us, our story. We'll go. Mm, that's everywhere. really good. That's and, good. And so I don't know, maybe it was for me, it was God that, you know, <laughs> made me write this book, but it helped me. And, um, you know, uh, my darkest points were where I wanted to die, and I was doing everything possible to, to, to do that. But something bigger than me, you know, um, it was, I don't know, something came through me, and I said, I got to do this. So I, I think I'm lucky to be alive, to be able to speak, and to say, hey, you know what? This book gave me the strength. So writing for me gave me the strength to uh, to heal. Mm, thank you so much. Soul. Thanks, Louisa. And I think you know your story 
um, lets everyone else out there know that it's okay to write about things that are really deep um, and personal and uh, and that it's therapeutic you know once you get once you allow yourself to to write your story Melvin can we go to you next Uh, Melvin, we can't hear you. Maybe if you can turn your volume up a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. It should be all the way up. Can everyone else hear how Melvin? Can, can you hear me now? It's low. It's, it's still low. I don't know what, what's happening here. Uh, I'm sorry. Try holding your microphone closer to your mouth on your headset. Okay, let's do this while Melvin's trying to sort out his sound. Can we go to Joseph in the meantime? And then Melvin, can we come back to you? Better? Oh, there we go. Much nice better, here. much better. Okay, sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning, Melvin. Listen, I am I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and I want to thank uh, Bridgetta and Mary for the great interview that I've that, that we had earlier. And uh, I'm listening to all the other authors, and it's very inspiring to hear what they're sharing. Uh, I am in Louisiana, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm in rural Louisiana. Uh, most people are familiar with New Orleans, and uh, but I live in North Louisiana, which is Shreveport, Bossier City. And uh, there's a rural area called Vivian, Louisiana, uh, where it's kind of like a suburb where my wife and I reside. So we're in Louisiana. But again, I just want to thank uh, Bridgetta and Mary for having me on. Uh, now, my first book uh, is, is my actually my latest book. It's called Mothers in Their Smen. This book was penned uh, by a hard-headed guy being myself because nobody ever talked to the moms about their relationships with their sons. I decided to do a survey. I was very blessed to have over 400 uh, mothers that range all the way from what we might deem uh, domestic mothers with jobs and living in the projects all the way to moms with PhDs and they work in corporate. And uh, we were able to put a compilation together about various topics uh, that, that uh, were found to be very interesting. And I'm very proud of this book and it's getting a lot of attention and uh, you know we just are very happy about it. And my uh, <clears throat> I'm also a poet. This book is called Mind Muscle. And having been an athlete and uh, have been said to be a, a uh, better than average athlete, I never liked the word student athlete because I knew the connotation behind it. And if you look up 1952, I think with the word student athlete, you'll find out that it had absolutely nothing to do with scholarly athletes. It was all about uh, the university not wanting to pay an insurance claim for an athlete. And that's how that term came about. And to this very day, People uh, think that student athlete was the term because people endeared academics from athletes, not so. <laughs> and I just always felt that was an oxymoron from the beginning and it bowed out to be true. Now, my, my first book that was near and dear to me that I really took time to uh, take time to write more was called Dying on My Feet. I am a 28-year uh, acute promotocytic leukemia survivor. I was given no chance to survive without a bone marrow transplant, unfortunately. I was not able to uh, find a donor. I remain on the donor list to this day, as a matter of fact, but 28, I've been cancer free for 28 years. So these, these three books that I'm sharing today are very near and dear. I have others that, that I've published uh, that are relatively old. I have uh, three other uh, books of poetry. I have two that I'm finishing up right now. Uh, one is called The Antithesis of Life. And the other, quite frankly, uh, there's a dark uh, place there uh, with, uh, how do we just say very honestly with all of the unrest going on in the world? And that book uh, is titled <clears throat> The Ordinary George, uh, 846. And uh, we're, we're talking about a lot of the discrepancies and hurt and frustration and pain. So with those things shared, uh, I just, I'm very happy and very pleased to be here. I'm very happy uh, to have the opportunity to meet the other authors that are on this uh, platform. I'm, I'm a, uh, a, uh, very, very happy about all of that, as I continue to say. Now, uh, I you, you can get all of my works at Barnes and Noble. However, uh, if you if you dare, <laughs> we 
we would prefer that you go to paypal.me forward slash Brighter Futures 91. Now, all of us are authors, and you know when you self-publish, or even if you publish through a, a company, you know the how the manufacturers get a big piece of what's going, going on. And uh, we prefer, quite honestly, you can go right and pay that at that time, and then uh, someone will get the books to you. I like to autograph all of my books. Let me share that with you guys as well. I like to autograph all of my books to give it that personal touch. But if you go to uh, paypal.me slash, uh, forward slash rather, Brighter Futures 91, you can get those books there. So again, uh, we're very happy and very pleased to be here. Uh, looking forward to having continuing contact with each and every one of you. Thank you, Melvin, very much. And thank you for sharing. That is awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We really enjoyed having you on the show as well. You know, I, I will say one thing. Every single week we've had um, a different author on the show. And every single week it's fun in a different way. You know, each interview with each one of you has been amazing in its own right and for its own special reasons. You know, each one of you have crept into our hearts um, for being uniquely you for telling your story in such an authentic uh, manner and just you know being yourself something that I don't think we would get to know just from reading your book but getting to know you on a personal level and that's the reason why we like the show is because you know we feel very strongly that if we if you get to know the person you want to go and read their books um, and that is why I think shows like the Writer's Corner live show does work because uh, because we can make that human connection. And I think it's one of the reasons why Mary and I love the live video aspect of doing things is that human to human connection that you wouldn't otherwise get because you can't get that from a website. Um, you can only get it from making that eye contact with someone and actually talking to them. Um, shall we go to Tina next? Tina was one of our very first um, guests early on in the show. So Tina, Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, I think I might have been on the first show, but I can't remember, but it was two years ago. And this mm -hmm. is like seeing all my best friends in one room. I've missed all of you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This is just amazing. It's a good homecoming. And those that are new friends, it's great to meet you. Um, I'm Tina O'Haley. I write a lot. Um, previously, my previous life, uh, I write textbooks for animation um, and have a history in that, but I always had secret novels. So I write in what I've created as the darkness universe. So the first one was Absolute Darkness, which is, uh, it's a sci-fi fantasy, time traveling, kind of there's a vampire, but not really, but there's a lot of cave diving and you will sweat. Um, and I think there's a love story in it too, um, but it, it shows my love for caving, though I do not cave dive. Cave diving scares me, so I wrote this to scare me. And then to find the character in there that is Alexander, his origin story, I had to dive in and I did uh, When Darkness Begins, and this is actually why a dark fantasy, and it goes back in time to when Alexander was 15 years old, his first sweet, beautiful love, um, the time traveling goddess that creates his universe and how that affects him and how it affected him for this book. So it's all in one universe. Um, it's very intricate. It's uh, multi-leveled. Uh, there's a touch of a little bit of quantum mechanics going on in there. If you kind of get that, but you don't have to, no math is you know, needed. And then right now I'm doing Dark Drink, which is a thriller, the same universe, but the characters don't know it. And it's a woman with the past, of course, who's trying to escape it and it catches up to her and how, and what she doesn't know, it's actually not her past she's running away from. Oh, and you can find cool. me in Amazon and everywhere and I'm out there and I'll put my links in the thing. Thank you mm. again so much for having me. Thank you, Tina, awesome. Okay, who's in the hot seat next? Cause I know we're getting close on time. I know we are, time's going by so quickly. Mary, um, shall we go to you next? No, no, let's not, do me not, last. No, let's no, get... no, not, not you. Oh, not that Mary. Mary. Yes, that Mary. Mary. Yeah, the other Mary. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Laramore. And let me say thank you, Bajetti, and thank you, Mary, for having me on. And all of y'all have inspired me. Um, I actually took a moment to write down the title of the next book. So thank y'all. Uh, so I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee, about 45 minutes from Nashville. 
Uh, the name of my book is 28 Days. I don't know how to put it on there. And still in action. Before I got my wings, uh, this book um, is available on Amazon. All of the proceeds goes to a nonprofit that I started, uh, Butterfly Moments Women's Recovery Center. What that is, is uh, going back to help women who have gone through or going through what I've been through, which is addiction. I'm, I, I am in recovery and come from a long history of, of, of a lot of stuff. Just put it like that. I've had a lot of trauma happen in my life and that book was uh, just enough information to uh, encourage some women, some people to stop the addiction cycle and to learn about recovery and just understand it may be difficult. However, it's, uh, it's very necessary if you are going to uh, make a change. So from my history, we have a, a sober living home. There are seven women there. And these women come from prison or, or homelessness, but all of them have in common substance abuse and a willingness to uh, learn a recovery program to help them. And over since we've been in existence, 2010, we've helped over 500 women. So uh, I'm just grateful to be here, grateful to be able to tell my story, grateful to have freedom in telling my story. Uh, that's all I have, y'all. Thanks so wow. much. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for sharing that. And thank you also because, you know, your story is also deeply personal um, and inspirational, you know, for many the other people out there who's got similar struggles. And so for them to be able to share your story and learn your lessons is, is amazing. Um, Lacey, you are also another one of our fun interviews. Um, I just love what you do. Tell us your story very briefly. Yes, thank you. Congratulations, Mary and Brigetti for two years, yay. And also the rest of the hurricanes coming through. I'm in Texas at the moment. <laughs> I'm um, So it, I have spotty internet right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, oh, but I, I live in Nashville, but I, uh, I've been in Texas visiting my mom. My book is called Profile of a Hit Songwriter. It's a co right uh, Thornton Klein as you probably familiar with him it is a nonfiction book based on a uh, psychological profile of hit songwriters and you know what's the difference between being a hit songwriter versus just the person on the side of the road singing their songs because they are really good ones um and I'm a fiddler singer songwriter guitarist I'm a poet um I have I'm working on about seven different projects right now. Some uh, middle grade readers that are coming out in January. And uh, Thornton Klein and, our, and I are also doing the rest of the Miss P series, which we have a great contract till 2029. Yay. Um, we have about 30 of those books coming out. So there'll be a really great series of that. And let's see. Oh, I have a... Um, that would be my dog. She is deciding that when I talk, she, I, she needs to go outside. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my flash fiction story was published in a group called, um, a little book called uh, Trick or Treat. And it is a little short story on it called, um, oh, if I can remember what it's called. It was published so, so many years ago, mm -hmm. um, Dust Bowl Girl and little true story about a girl from the Dust Bowl period. And I think that's that's it, I think. <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you, Lacey. Yeah. We learned a lot from we learned a lot from you and looking forward to all the work that you've got coming up. And another person that we learned a whole bunch of tricks from was Mark Adams. Mark, you had so much amazing stuff to share with the community. Um, so quickly tell us where you're from and, okay. and why you are an author. Well, I'm originally from Dawson Springs, Kentucky, not far from uh, Clarksville, Tennessee in Nashville. Um, I still own a book warehouse where I warehouse all, all of my books there. Um, now I live in Orlando, Florida. You can see the sun outside. <laughs> That's where I'm from. Uh, so I get to go outside all the time, but yeah. you know, I usually have to wear a mask. But my uh, website is www www.markwayneadams.com 
Um, you can follow me on any social platform um, at Mark Wayne Adams. And I am the former president for the Florida Authors and Publishers Association here in Florida. Um, I am also the Reader's Favorite Illustration Awards judge, which is an international competition. It, they also do book reviews as well. So all of you authors who want a free book review, go to readersfavorite.com and sign up. Um, and I have illustrated 64 children's books in the past decade that have won over 100 different children's book awards from K through eight. And not only do I illustrate, I've written a novel an award-winning novel series. I'm on the third book. I actually wrote all eight books at the same time. And since I'm the publisher of those books, I'm releasing them every six months of one another. So. Awesome. You're very inspirational. I've listened to Mark. Thank you speak at a book festival and that's where we met like three years ago cool. and um you know you're just so you're a very inspirational guy you're awesome you just kind of you. you do it all you're an all-in-one package yeah well whenever i started out you know i had no support system um mm -hmm. i was just illustrating for other authors who did not know what they were doing but um i had a printing background i worked for disney and i worked for sea world so i had all of this organization organizational background uh, managing people. So I just started my own publishing company because the publishers I wanted to publish my books for, wh whom I'd already been illustrating for, they said, ah, oh, that book won't ever sell. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm a public speaker. I see thousands of kids every year. And they always ask me, do you have a book of your own? And I'm like, so I had one and I sold out 5,000 copies. I said, you know, I, that's when I decided I didn't need a publisher, but I've worked with 16 different publishers that continually work with me. So I have I have plans all the way past 2029s because most of my authors write in a series. Mark, you've done a phenomenal job. Congratulations. Thank you. And you know, I want I would really like to see each one of you connect with each other, but I, I you know you do want to connect with Mark. Yes, <laughs> Make sure. point of connecting Definitely. with Mark. Please, please, Definitely. please do that. Um, two of our authors have not actually been on the show yet, but they are here with us today. So um, I'm going to give Tiffany a, an opportunity first and then Anna Marie go next. And then after that, um, can we have Joseph? Joseph and Mike. Uh, and, yeah, Mike. And, then, and then, yeah. Is there anyone who needs to leave urgently? So we can and have Deb, We have Deborah. We have Deborah too. Yeah. Okay, so let's have Tiffany first. Okay, can you? Thank you, um, Mary and Bridgetta, for this opportunity. And I'm excited to actually speak on the show coming up this fall. I have written over 16 books um, in total, some of them my own, some of them co authored, and then two anthology books I've written chapters for. Um, it started out because I was on maternity leave and was bored 10 years ago and put out our very first gluten-free cookbook and then ended up selling like 9,000 copies on Amazon. And, and I was just like, what just happened? Uh, <laughs> and it's been just an amazing ride. And then it turned into a speaking career. And then we went into quarantine and um, I started writing a column for a local magazine in Chicago, which actually got syndicated. Um, now it's gonna be published in four different US cities. So, um, I pulled two of our books. This is our kid approved. It's a allergy friendly cookbook. We primarily write for the allergy friendly community and the women with autoimmune diseases. So this is um, top eight free and all of those foods that you would have eaten as a kid that still taste great. And then this is our newest. This came out about a year and a half ago. This is a Thrive Clean. It is a functional medicine workbook for people that have been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition that need to learn to eat differently. And it includes a journal and all the recipes and plans inside. Um, so again, thank you for this today. And I'm wow. excited to be on the show. That is amazing. Tiffany, we can't wait to have you on the show for like a real show. We can dive deep into, um, into your background and why you do what you do. So amazing stuff. Looking forward to that. And Marie, can we have you up next? Where's Anne Marie? Oh, there she is. Hi, Anne Marie. Oh, she's still muted. You still muted, oh, Anne Marie? Oh, there, there you go. go. Scandal's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm here. I'm Anne Marie Connolly. I'm on at the southern tip of South Africa, of Africa, southernmost of Africa near Cape Gullis. So far away from most of you. And I'm a first-time author. 
I've just now written my book and finished it and it's actually being printed as we speak. I've got a proof. It's called Absorbing Too Much of the Atmosphere. And it's my story about my life with my schizophrenic son and also a husband who had dementia and various other things in between and over above it, above it all. I had a brilliant review actually also from everybody from California, from a, a friend of my son's who, who wrote, who um, read it and he said, she said, she wrote me a brilliant review. She's um, Kate Woods. She's a master's. She does doing a master's in social work. She's a student at the University of California, Los Angeles. So I've got that on the back of my book. And yes, there's the proof and it's being printed. Um, I'm very honored to be here. I don't feel like an author. I don't, <laughs> it feels quite unreal. Um, but yes, mm-hmm. I've written a book and it's. I, I'm hoping that I can get it out there and help other people who are basically struggling with the same thing of having a family member who, who has a mental illness or a husband or wife who has a mental illness. Um, yes, quite been quite a journey. Mm. Congratulations, and we look forward to having you on the show um, as well, so we can dive a little bit deeper into um, into your into your book and 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 your background. Um, can we thank go to Joseph? Pleasure, Joseph Carabas, you up next. Hi there. <clears throat> Number one, thank you, Green Brigetti. This is this is quite the opportunity. I'm very flattered, definitely, to be considered among so many amazing, amazing authors. Uh, Hello to the ever greater to Haley and Joseph Lewis. Make sure you get Joseph Lewis to tell you about singing at his high school graduation for all of his students. It's a great story. Now that I've shamed you, thank you. Uh, My books, one is The Augmented Man. That's the last book that I published. And I have an anthology of previously published work called Tales Told Round Celestial Campfires. They're both getting great reviews. I'd like to make an offer to everybody on this call and all of your watchers and listeners, you buy a copy of my book, I will thank you when I get my royalty check. That's (laughs) there. Glad you're all laughing, good. Um, A man after his own self, right? Yeah, you know, you gotta promote yourself because if you don't, then you end up on the back of a milk carton somewhere. Um, Anyway, um, my tagline is that I'm boring and dull and I write autobiography and then people read my books and I go, you you what, you you wrote that and you write autobiography? My sister very often says, did we grow up in the same house together? So um, I'm currently working on a book uh, a novel called Shaman Story, and it's uh, basically the story of a child who is taught these practices and then has to make his way in the modern world. Um, but he, he can do amazing things, but the rules of what he was taught, he's not allowed to talk about it. He can't go out there and say, look what I can do. <laughs> so basically he has to help people one at a time. And he learns to find that very rewarding based on what his grandfather taught him as a child. Um, The last book I was working on is called The Inheritors. And that's a kind of uh, story. It's a novel about a child who is taken into the future because he is brilliant beyond measure and can't exist in the current time. So he has to go somewhere where his abilities are accepted and honored, except that he discovers they're not accepted and honored. I think because um, it's a Republican administration. I'm sorry I had to say that. But anyway, thank you again. If I didn't say something you folks needed me to say, let me know. You can find me at josephcarabas.com, also in Nashua, New Hampshire. Oh, and before I forget, uh, Miss Cloutier, you're in Boston, Mass. Did I did I correctly hear that you're from Italy? Yes. Well, in that yes, case, I am. Um, I would love to have you do some work with me on the book I'm working on because the little boy is raised speaking Sicilian, 
I haven't spoken Sicilian since I was five years old. Actually, Sicilian was my native language until my father said, we're in America, we're gonna speak American, which meant only he could speak Italian. It was great. So I would love to have you help. Thank you ever so much for making that available. Bye. I love that, I love that networking going on here. Joseph Lewis, you're up next. Thank you for having me. And, and again, congratulations you two on a really nice format. Uh, I wanna say hello to Tina. I wanna thank you for the nice review you did on my latest that's coming out in November. It's called Betrayed. Um, it's, uh, I guess it's backwards, what can I say? Uh, it's kind of like my life. At any rate, um, I'm a former um, administrator. I just retired from education after 44 years. Uh, so no more kids sent to detention or anything else. So Joe Carabas, uh, you're, you're lucky, you're all right. Um, back when I was a counselor, I started writing. Um, my first book was published in 2014. I was 60 years old. That book came out the same month that uh, my son Will was shot and killed uh, in Chicago. It was, um, he was an innocent bystander. Um, the book had nothing to do with Will and his story, but the, the impetus for my first four books was my work as a counselor working with stranger abducted and sexually exploited kids. Um, I switched gears after that, uh, wrote a book called uh, Caught in a Web, and that was when I first met you, Mary, and you, Brigetti, um, and I was on your show with Matthew. Um, that won an award, a uh, Pencraft Literary Award. I was uh, happy about that. And then um, I wrote Spiral into Darkness, which kind of explores the mind and the world of a serial killer. Um, Betrayed takes the same characters very much like uh, James Patterson would do with his Alex Sanford, with his uh, Lucas Davenport. Um, and it just, my main characters happen to be adolescent kids and each book is, uh, they're a year older or so. Um, and I just, you know, I, I enjoy the world of kids because for 44 years, that's what I did. And I'll continue doing what I'm doing. I'm currently over 25,000 words um, on my next. I write psychological uh, thriller mystery. And again, thanks, Tina. Thanks, Joe. Joe, you had me on your show way back when, and I appreciate it. Um, and Mary and, and Brigetti, again, thank you. And I appreciate everybody, you know, for, for doing what you do. It takes guts uh, to put your name on, on something that can be riddled with um, acclaim or shot at, as the case may be. And, and we've all been there on both ends. So thank you all. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for sharing your story with us um, as well. Dania, can we hear from you next, please? Thank you. Oh, and congratulations. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Danya Vaz, and uh, I write steamy, steamy uh, romance novels. Um, my series, Windy City Nights, takes place uh, in Chicago. And uh, currently, I have uh, four titles in this series, a uh, novella, uh, Off the Hook, and three full-length uh, romance uh, novels, uh, On the Ropes. Uh, the Warrior's Whisper and Hannah's Bliss, uh, which was uh, the title that I was on uh, your show with. Yeah, do you, have a do you have a copy of your book in front of you that you can show? Uh, well, I have the three, but the, the one that uh, I was going to share for um, the show today is an anthology um, that was just released that uh, is a fundraising anthology called uh, Take Two. Uh, which is a fundraiser for um, a Nashville nonprofit, uh, Thistle Farms. Mm. Uh, so 25 of us uh, got together um, for, a, unfortunately, a conference that was canceled, Writers on the River, um, but we were still pressing on. Um, and it's a collection of 25 second chance stories that will warm your heart and make you believe in love again. So that was just published, yes. And it's a big, big book, uh, 
It's over wow. 600 pages. Wow. Uh, and it, yep, yep. And so all the uh, proceeds will be donated um, to uh, Thistle Farms and it's only on sale until September 30th. So uh, time is of the essence. So we're very, very excited to be able to do this. They are a sponsor of this conference and unfortunately due to um, due to the virus, we had to cancel this year. So it's the fifth anniversary um, of this conference. So uh, they put together this, an this anthology. So it was very exciting for me because I've never participated in an anthology before. And um, I uh, contributed a short story, which has nothing to do with my series. So I think I'm actually going to expand it and start a new series, which is not a steamy series. It's a small town country romance. So it's something uh, completely different, which is uh, fun for me as an author to start something new that is something uh, separate uh, with a whole new cast of characters in a completely different location. Uh, so I wanted to kind of stretch my wings a little bit. Um, so it's it's been a lot of fun uh, for me uh, as an author to stretch my wings a little bit uh, too in a wonderful, wonderful cause uh, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it's been a lot of fun um, for me to, to give that uh, a, a try. So um, it's been a great, uh, great experience. Uh, my novels are long. Yeah, my novels are long. So trying to write a short story uh, was a, quite a challenge. <laughs> a challenge for me, <laughs> but I did it. So <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, yeah. Well done. Mike, can we hear from you next? Mike Tull? Yeah, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Okay, I know we're, I guess, in World Cup soccer, they would call this extended overtime or whatever. You know, <laughs> so, so I'm going to talk really fast, okay? Put my, uh, my background as a sportscaster to work here. Um, I have probably a little bit different background than most people here. I'm a former sports writer, but then I grew up, became an adult, and I started writing books. <laughs> I'm kind of a nonfiction guy. I live in Murfreesboro, yep. Tennessee, about 30 minutes southeast of Nashville. Brigetti's laughing. You know, Brigetti, your background with the white flowers and all the white, you look like the entrance to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it looks like, seriously. So I guess you're not St. Peter. I guess you're, you know, St. Brigetti, whatever. <laughs> but anyways. I love it. That's going to be your new name, St. Brigetti. St. <laughs> Brigetti. St. Mary. But anyways, um, I'm an author, ghostwriter, publishing consultant. Uh, the last two books I've written with my own name on it. One is, uh, I remember Pat Summit, it's an oral biography of the famous University of Tennessee women's basketball coach who passed away. She had early onset dementia, passed away four years ago. And then I know Joseph mentioned some politics earlier, so I'm going to have a little counterpoint here to what he was saying. Here's a book I did on uh, compiling uh, Joe Biden's misspoken quotes, some of the things he said over the years, back when he was in the land of the living, uh, is when I did this book, leading up to the 2016 election, although he ended up dropping out before that. So like Melvin shaking his head. I know. We're going to kind of balance things out here a little bit, you know. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, anyways, the... the Two of the ghostwriting projects I'm working on right now, of course, I got non-disclosures. I can't be too specific about them, or I'd have to shoot all of you or whatever. And, and I'm not a violent <laughs> person to do that. But, but uh, one of them is a, uh, it's about two very prominent historical figures who live more than 100 years apart, who have uncanny similarities to one another. That's one of the book, that's one of the books I'm ghostwriting. And another one is, it's a healthcare professional, uh, She's been at it for over 40 years and she's on the front line of COVID-19 and uh, a lot of interesting stuff going on there. A lot of it you don't read in the in the media or online, whatever. So that's me, Mike Toll, uh, just outside Nashville. And thank you very much for having me. I, I met Mary about, I guess, about six months ago after I did the show for the, you know, for the first time. I hope you have me back again sometime. If I haven't offended anybody too much, I would You're love- You're fine, Mike. <laughs> You're so funny. You crack me up. And, and we, have, have you we, back. We, we have our reigning queen, Deborah Davis, who we want to hear from next, who's going to teach us how not to slam our doors and behave ourselves, right? That's that's why I left you for last, Deborah. 
<laughs> there was there was method there was method to my madness to leave you <laughs> last. So <laughs> do give us the I soup. need to write a book about how to get politically oriented people not to slam the door. Yes. This is my book. So you know what they're laughing at. How to keep your daughter from slamming the door. And this one, I put out the ebook version this year. And some of you might be interested in this. I did a virtual book signing. So if yes. you're curious about how I did that, you can contact me. I put my information in the chat. So my background is that I taught high school science. I'm a bona fide science geek. And I taught for 27 years. And then I, um, somewhere towards the end of that, I got sick with Lyme disease and I had stopped teaching for a while. So like uh, someone mentioned earlier, that I got bored because I was literally on the couch and I started writing. So I came out with two YA novels um, one's called Fairly Certain and the other one's called Fairly Safe. And I write, for lack of better description, humorous suspense, which I'm pretty sure is not a genre. And I went from there back to teaching and I would write during the summers because anyone who's a teacher knows that you can't do anything except teaching when you're teaching. So I could only write during the summers. And then all of a sudden I had two manuscripts. I said, I'm going to leave teaching and become a writer. So I did that and um, I've been writing, but haven't have done absolutely no marketing. But somehow I got invited to be in four anthologies. So the power of your inner brilliance and um, manifested blessings came out this year. And um, her global voice is coming, just came out in the ebook version. And Awakening Health should be coming out in a couple of, uh, couple of months. And I'm a, also a certified personal trainer in, on top of everything else. So what else? I have two groups on Facebook. One's for everybody. It's called Life Advice 101. Yeah, I'm still teaching. And the other one is called The Mom Meetup, Raising Confident Girls. That's for moms. I um, Right now, I'm into working with moms of teenage and tween age daughters to help them navigate their relationships so they can be excited about the teenage years instead of dreading them. Or um, if they need repairing them, there's a whole bunch of lessons in there. And I'm a relationship person and um, that's, that's my superpower. I'm, I figure out why the people are banging their heads, the, the mothers and daughters, or when I, you know, from years of doing student teacher parent conferences and I get them talking so that they can now address whatever the issue is in the school. And uh, I guess that's about it. I, I, um, I'm in the, I have a, the book that I wrote is a series of exercises. And uh, I was going to say not to toot my own horn, but I'm supposed to be tooting my own horn. So I'm going to say it's a really powerful vehicle for for connecting people who are not getting along, who love each other and really want to be getting along. So mm -hmm. instead of them having to reinvent the wheel or figure it out as they're going, it's sort of like, you know, the life instructions. And then yeah, I would, to give I'd you call it a, the, the Bible. Bible. The Bible. Yeah, Mary likes it <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, and to give you my range, my, my, um, Book Fairly Certain is a story about a computer geek who uh, playing a GPS game in the woods and he climbs a tree because he's lost and he falls out. And when he wakes up, he thinks he's back in Robin Hood times. But really, at the end of the woods, there's a renaissance fair going on and he's been picked up by LARPers, live action role players. And they think he's playing the game and he's fairly certain he's having a weird dream. So that's the kind of stuff I write. Oh, oh and then I have a book that came out in 2019 called How to Get Your Happy On. And I'm in the middle of revamping that to make it match the stay at home stuff so that uh, people can use that to help themselves at this time. Mm, very I'm needed. Okay. Happy person. Mike Toll wants to know where you live, Deborah. I'm, I'm from Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. And there was somebody else, Sergio, who was from Connecticut. 
Yeah, Sergio lives up in Connecticut too. Yes, and he's also Italian. Um, okay, well, listen, we have loved having you guys on. This has been so awesome. I'm so sorry, for, you know, there are people who have to go, but I know everybody's very know. busy. And, you know, I know. Thank you, thank you, Steph, so yeah. much. This has been absolutely awesome, and I, you know, I really wish um, that I could give a shout out to every single author that's ever been on the show, but it's impossible. The list is so, so long. But I do want to just say a quick hello to, to people who have written us because they couldn't be here. Um, so shout out to Yvette Bowden, to Linda West, Jen Turner, Brenda Adelman, Darshawn McAway, um, Ella Gilbert, Gina, Trever, Thornton. Um, you know, so I, I if I Kim. missed your name here, Ken, uh, it was absolutely not intentional, but those are some of the people that wrote us to say congratulations on our second anniversary and, um, you know, apologize for not being able to be here today. But really a huge big shout out to every single author that's been on the show for the last two years. We love each one of you for a special reason, for a different reason. Um, and it's been fantastic. And I hope that this is going to lead to some more networking because this is the first time we've actually had just a bunch of authors together. So we hope that each one of you will connect with each other and let's continue helping each other write good stories. And with that, uh, from Cape Town in South Africa, it's goodbye, everyone. Have a great day further, wherever you might be in the world and continue to write good stuff. Yeah. Bye. Bless everybody. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Wear your mask. Bye.